Okay, this is uh, Arizona 211, which is fine aggregate specific gravity. For fine aggregate specific, specific gravity, you run it on minus number four material <coughs> or minus number eight material. Most of the time it's gonna be minus number four. We need approximately 1,200 grams to begin with. Weigh out our 1,200 grams. We're going to initially dry this to a constant weight. The procedure for drying it to a constant weight is put it in the oven for at 230 degrees Fahrenheit for a minimum of one hour. Uh, take it out, weigh it to the nearest 0.1 gram. Put it back in the oven for a minimum of 30 minutes. Take it back out, weigh it to the nearest 0.1 gram. You keep drying it in intervals of a minimum of 30 minutes and weighing it until you lose no more than 0.1 gram. That is considered con constant weight. And we're gonna let it cool. Once it's cooled, we add water to cover it. And we're gonna let it soak for 15 to 19 hours. At the end of that 15 to 19 hours, we have to carefully decant the water, making sure that we don't lose any fines. I decant all that water off of there. Okay, so now I have my sample here. I'm going to spread it out on my non-absorbent surface. Of course, it's going to be a lot wetter than this. This is close to SSD, but it's not exactly after, uh, exactly after I uh, decanted the water. Now I'm going to work this material, mix it up good, spread it out, let it cool, or let it dry, I'm sorry. And I can use a current of warm or ambient air in order to cool it. A fan works good. A gentle current it blows over it, dries it. You want to make sure it dries evenly. So every once in a while, you will have to stir it. Get all the parts that are drying on the outside back into the middle so it doesn't dry on the edges faster than the middle. Keep doing that until I get close to SSD. I want to be wetter than SSD on my first trial. It's getting close. I want to make sure you mix the material thoroughly. Grabbing my comb and my tamper, I'm going to place the comb in the material. Fill it up with the other hand. You fill it to overflowing, and then another scoop or two above it. I need to apply 25 blows with my rammer, starting 0.2 inches above the top of the material, which is about a quarter of an inch. Remove the excess from around the comb. As you do this, make sure that the comb doesn't move. Now lift straight up on the comb. Now I, I shook a little bit there, causing it to slough. If on the first trial it sloughs, we don't know if we're right at SSD or drier than SSD. So on the first trial, you would have to add a few drops of water, a few milliliters. Okay, once you add the water, mix it thoroughly, then you're gonna have to cover it and let it set for a minimum of 30 minutes. That lets that moisture distribute throughout the sample. At the end of that time, you continue doing your cone test, 
checking for the SSD condition. SSD is saturated surface drive. Okay, then it remained molded. That means it is wetter than SSD. So I would keep drying it. And testing it with the comb until I do reach the SSD condition. Once it nears SSD condition, you're gonna to have to test it with the comb uh, frequently in order to make sure that you, re you get it at the SSD condition and not drier than SSD. Again, every time before you uh, use your comb test, you have to make sure it's mixed, mixed thoroughly. Now I have my material has slept. That means I am at the SSD condition. I don't want to lose any moisture now before I get my way out my samples. So I'm going to put it into a container. I'm going to cover it so it doesn't lose moisture. And now I can proceed with getting the, the amount of material I need for my samples. Okay, so now I have my sample protected from moisture loss. I can come over here, I have to weigh out a sample for, that is gonna be introduced into my pycnometer. It has to be 500 plus or minus 10 grams. It's 499.4. I have to record that weight. Again, cover up my sample here. This is gonna be introduced into the pycnometer. Now at the same time, I can weigh out a sample that's gonna be put in the oven and uh, determining my oven dried weight. Again, that has to be between 500 plus or minus 10 grams, and it has to be within 0.2 grams of my sample that's going into my pycnometer. So that was 499.2. I can put in 499.4 is what I read, so I can put 499.2 to 499.6. Okay, 499.4, that's exactly what I had for my sample I'm putting in my pycnometer. This sample is going to an oven at 230 plus or minus 9 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to dry that to a constant weight. Again, the procedure for drying to a constant weight is I have to put, leave it in the oven for a minimum one hour, take it out, weigh it to the nearest tenth of a gram, 0.1 gram, put it back in the oven for a minimum of uh, 30 minutes, take it back out, weigh it to the nearest 0.1 gram. I keep drying it in intervals of a uh, minimum of 30 minutes and weighing it until I lose no more than 0.1 gram. At the end of that time, I need to set it to the side, let it cool. For this, you let it cool for one hour, plus or minus a half an hour. During, and after that, then you have, go ahead and weigh it to the nearest 0.1 gram, and that gives you your oven dried weight. While that's drying in the oven, I would come over here with my sample that goes into my pycnometer. Before I place it into my pycnometer, I have to make sure that my pycnometer has been calibrated. To calibrate the pycnometer, 
You're going to fill it with water at a temperature of 77 plus or minus 3 degrees Fahrenheit up to its calibrated line. There's a uh, real light line around the top of this net. You fill it up so that the bottom of the meniscus is sitting on top of that line. That is the calibration. You uh, make sure you get the temperature of the water, 77 plus or minus 3 degrees Fahrenheit. Dry off the neck, dry off the outside, weigh it to the nearest 0.1 gram. That is the calibrated weight of your pycnometer. So now I have a calibrated pycnometer. Before I introduce my sample into it, I need to partially fill my pycnometer with water. A little bit in the bottom there. Using a funnel, you can introduce your sample into the pycnometer. Now I need to fill the technometer to approximately 90% of its total capacity. That's up to the calibration line. As I'm doing that, I'm rinsing material that's clinging to the neck. Now I have it filled to 90% of its capacity approximately. <clears throat> I'm going to agitate it to remove any air bubbles, or all the air bubbles. It's going to take a little while to do this. You can agitate it like I'm doing right now. You can put it on your surface, roll it. You can see that there's air bubbles being released from the sample. You just keep doing this until you get all the air bubbles out. You can see here, I'm going to say all the bubbles are gone. You can see there's foam in the neck here. You can use a few drops of 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol in order to dispel those bubbles. This little bottle has the, the alcohol in it. Just a few drops. Okay, so now you can see how uh, the, two the few drops of uh, alcohol dispel the, the bubbles, the foam in there. Now I need to fill this up to the calibration line. Now I usually fill it just below the calibration line. I need to get the temperature of my sample. <clears throat> Make sure it's 73 plus or minus three degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if it's not, I need to bring it to that temperature. I can do that in a circulating water bath that's set to 77 plus or minus three. That's the preferred method. So now I am close to my calibration line. It's at the correct temperature. I need to bring it to my calibration line. I like to use a pipette to do that. You need to do it at eye level, make sure that you get the bottom of the meniscus resting on top of the calibration. Now I have it to the calibration line. I have to have a towel to dry off inside of the neck above the calibration line. Make sure you don't get into the material itself. I'm getting all the water drops that are above my sample Make sure that the neck is dry. Make sure your, the outside of your pycnometer is dry. <clears throat> Weigh this to the nearest 0.1 gram. Now, <clears throat> I went ahead and, uh, ahead and spread out a sample from my oven dry. If you didn't, then you're going to have to have a big pan all of this material has to be placed into this big pan. 
it out, making sure that you don't lose any. Get all of the material that's in your pycnometer. <clears throat> and this total sample has to be dried. You can let the material settle some and decant some of the water, making sure you don't lose any material. But, oh, just put that in the oven and let it dry. It's going to take a lot longer to dry. Okay, I've already explained the oven dried. So I have my SSD weight, I have my weight of, in my pycnometer, which is the weight in water, and I have my oven dried weight, and I have the calibration weight of my pycnometer. Those are the numbers that you need uh, to do your calculations for specific gravity. Please be sure to review all of the materials available in your Soils and Aggregate Technician Certification Workbook.